Uh-oh, I'm out here in the middle of the wilderness and the battery on my phone just died. Don't worry, this week on HGMM, John's back with a project to solve this problem. Hello, and welcome to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals. I'm John from Nailed It, and today we're gonna to be making a solar-powered cell phone charger. I know, I can hear what you're asking. Hey John, why would I need a solar cell phone charger? I could just plug my cell phone into the wall at home. We've all been there, out camping, playing your favorite playlist from your cell phone on your Bluetooth speaker. Then you look down and see this. Honey, we forgot to pack the wall outlet. But not to worry though, you brought this, a solar cell phone charger. So hang tight right there, I'm gonna show you how to make one of these and I'm gonna be giving it away at the end of today's episode. This project really doesn't take very many materials or very many tools. Let's take a look. For tools, we'll need electrical tape and wire trimmers. For materials, we'll need two solar panels. We'll need a spare cell phone battery charger. We'll need a couple Velcro strips and we'll need a waterproof case. And as always, I have links in the description below, so if you wanted to make this yourself, just click on the links and you can get the exact same materials I did. All right, we're gonna start with the spare battery pack that I provided in the link in the description. Now the smaller end is gonna be the input for the battery charger. So I'm gonna to want to make sure I leave as much cord as possible up to this end and cut off the larger end. So I wanna take my wire clippers and clip off that big end. Now you're going to see four different cables inside of your USB cable. The green and white wires are used for data. These are irrelevant for our purposes. We're going to focus only on the red and black. I'm going to start by stripping the red and black wire on the USB cable. Lastly, you'll want to make sure that you remove both of the data cables by cutting them back as far as you can. You really don't want them to interfere with the power cables later on. Next up, we need our solar panels. Now, we're only concerned with the red and the black wire from the USB cable, and on these, we're only concerned with the red and black wire as well. So we're gonna make sure that the reds touch from both of these. So the reds are gonna be touching on both of these and the blacks are gonna be touching. You don't want this to go the other direction, red to black and, and red to black on either side, because that's going to step up the voltage and we don't want that for our battery. So you wanna make sure that the red touches red, black touches black, and when we bring in our USB cable, it's gonna do the same thing. So you're going to take the black and black and red and red, and you're going to make sure that you twist these together as tightly as possible. Next up, we need to take our USB cable and make sure that the black lead touches the black wires and that the red lead touches the red wires. And once all the wires are bound, you can start to tape it all up. Now, if you're good with solder, you could certainly solder these together. But since they really don't move that much, I found that on my own unit, just using tape seemed to work fine. All right, with the wiring finished and the battery, you're just about done. This is a lot easier than you thought it'd be, wasn't it? I'd like to take this moment to ask you to come to my home channel, Nailed It, and subscribe. We have all kinds of project videos there, and I do an occasional vlog where I talk about different projects and different things that I've learned along the way. And if you're interested, I just launched my website at www.nailedatwoodcraft.com. All right, so now that you've got your solar panels hooked up to your battery, the only thing left is a case. In my case, I'm using one of these black boxes. It's a waterproof box. And one thing I found is that I actually use it uh, to store personal items when I'm going camping. You could put other things in here like a first aid kit, um, and it works great for those things. So for this project, I'm actually gonna step this box up to a larger box. So as part of my giveaway, you're gonna get a better unit than I have uh, in terms of camping because it'll be able to carry more items for things like a first aid kit or other personal items that you might have. 
And I found that having a black case is really bad at night if you're ever looking for it and you can't find it uh, to plug your phone in and charge your phone overnight. Now I know what you're thinking, John, there's solar panels. Why would you plug your phone in overnight? I should explain how to use one of these. Uh, you're gonna wanna make sure that you actually charge the internal battery during the day. Do not plug your phone in during the day while the battery's charging. You wanna let the battery charge and then charge your phone from that battery overnight. Let's take a look at that new case for this giveaway. I'm going to be stepping it up to a much larger case so you can put all kinds of neat things in here. Once again, it is waterproof. Uh, it is much, much larger so you can have all kinds of personal items for camping and, and uh, other things you want to do with that. To mount these solar panels, I like using the command Velcro style strips used to hang pictures. All right, we're outside. It is actually almost sunset, and I put this right where the sun can hit it. And if we look really closely at the battery here, you do see that the light is red, which indicates that it's charging. And you would plug your phone in to the USB port uh, just on the other side there. So uh, I would recommend that you let this charge all day, uh, and then overnight, you would plug in your phone and charge your phone through the USB port there. So as you've seen, all of my videos on Home and Garden for Mere Mortals have something to do with self-reliance. So to be entered to win this solar cell phone charger, all you need to do is comment down below with quick tips on how to be more self-reliant in our day-to-day -day lives. It doesn't have to be anything big or extreme, just simple tips on how we can all become more self-reliant and productive in our own lives. At the end of this month, I'll go through, put together all the names, we're gonna select one person randomly and notify you that you've won the solar cell phone charger. So give us a comment down below and share this video. Please subscribe to Home and Garden for Mere Mortals and please subscribe to my home channel. Nailed it. Thanks for watching. My raspberries get about this tall, develop fruit, and then start falling. This takes up space and it's also harder to get at the fruit. By having a tower, I eliminate the need for more space. A pyramid is another great example of a tower.